Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, Smooth and Easy, W L A D. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ever listen to those radio stations like Smooth and Easy? Smooth. Everyone talks yes. really smooth. Smooth jazz. <laughs> And then easy, you gotta come up with the listening. Like, I hate it. Easy listening. Maybe I'd it. like it no more that I'm older. Yeah, when I, I you know, I'm a lot easier, mellower right now in my older age. I think. Yeah. I don't know if you're mellower, but maybe <laughs> you're I'm smoother. Music. Actually, you probably are mellower than you were back when you. Were I think I'm mellower. <laughs> All right. Welcome everybody. Welcome to our podcast. Uh, this is our regular study of the Shrimad Bhagavatam. It's Tell a friend Friday. No, it's no, Thursday. It's not, it's not, not even close. Not. It's not, it's what day is it? Tuesday. It's, oh, it's Tuesday. <laughs> How could I be four days off? <laughs> I can understand being one day off. <laughs> I'm four days off. You know why we're going to have to, because you're looking forward to seeing everyone this weekend for, for the retreat. You oh, you know why? There. Because the, the golfers coming up today. No. Um, Ariana and Mustache and Under are coming up um, tomorrow. Um Tomorrow Holy or princess? on Friday? No, they're just coming up to help okay. nice. get our act together. Holy That's Princess, great. Lev, Tom Essig. It's quite a crew. It's like a regular crew. It's coming together like on regular intervals now, it seems like up there. We're just hanging out around the fire, drinking beer. Just kidding. I don't drink beer. But we do hang out around the fire. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Let's, get serious, yeah, let's get serious, man. We need to get this? serious about life. Speaking I, about getting serious about life, guess who I'm gonna we're gonna get for a uh, for an interview day. You can't announce that because it hasn't been set up yet. It hasn't been established. You don't even know who I'm gonna say. Oh, okay. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna say the person you mentioned before the show, no, no, <laughs> okay. I'm not. Right, well, but got? I can Tell me who you got because it's I'm well, it's totally unaware. Weekend, of this it's person. not this weekend yet, or it, or it might be. But we well, haven't. You never decided. got the mod of his rock band who you promised you would get. I'm like I'm intimidated by them. They I'm said they would do it. You met him. You had this beautiful connection in the Krishna Balaram Mandir and Vrindavan. I'm a, I, you know what? It's like uh, I'm used to being like the rock Hold star, it. not the fan. Were you exaggerating, Raghunath? Tell us the truth. Were you saying like, yeah, and he what, agreed when to come on the show? And he never really did tell the no, truth. No, he did say that. Well, But it, I couldn't tell if it was Kinda. like, I'll be on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me back. I, I can't tell if it was sort of like he wanted <laughs> okay. to be or didn't. I didn't want to twist his arm. I'm not. You did come and announce. I guess it was just your your the glee that you were in at that moment where you announced, "Yeah, he's gonna come and he's gonna be on the show." <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, I did see them. I did see him, Nav Kishore, when we were in Vrindavan. I think you should give it a other. try. Give it a try. Right? I love him. Reach out. I love Nav Kishore. <laughs> I love Nav Kishore. <laughs> okay, uh, then who are you gonna? Who you know, gonna the gonna... thing about musicians, yeah, they will never know how much you love them. You know what I mean? Oh. Or you have to do too, something those... to demonstrate your love, Rogana. Like <laughs> <laughs> a tattoo, <laughs> maybe. A tattoo. I'll get a tattoo. I'll get a. I'll get a mod of his rock band tattoo. All right. Let's line that up for today. Who who who's in your area? Dustin. 
Dustin, <laughs> Scott Bakos. Yeah. It's my go-to tattoo guys. Kim Rose. Kim Rossini. She's she's good. All right. All right. Let's, let's move over to Were you going to tell us who it is? Or? Is it actually someone? Is it just your imagination? Or is it someone no, that's you know agreed what? to do it? No, Gopal Chandra. Gopal Chandra. Oh, to Gopal Chandra, yeah. Gopal Chandra, because he's going through this transition of bodies. And he's like got bare, he's got, he just. It becomes real. Spoke real. me, or he spoke me. He made me a video, but I didn't listen to it. Same thing, a message, and right. I didn't listen to my message. Jiva G sends me messages every day. I never listen to any of them, but not <laughs> intentionally. It's just my brain is can't think in, in, in chronological order. But he, he sent me this video message. And uh, anyway. And he said, I went to see him yesterday. He said, hey, did you see my message? I said, no. He said, oh, it was a video. I made you a whole video. I was like, oh, I'll play it now. And the guy's just got deep realizations about life and death and family and 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 deep this realizations about a person who's been applying bhakti and now is, you know, preparing to leave his body. And, and, and it's beautiful. And he's our Zoomer. He's yeah. our regular Zoomer. This is something... I think we've seen repeatedly, Raghunath, right? It's like, you know, we're walking around. We have our community of, of, of yogis, of bhakti yogis, and we're all practicing, and we're all, you know, regularly hearing these messages and discussing them. But we worry that still, you know, I'm still the same guy, right? I am still have similar attachments that I've always had, and I'm still, you know, my mind just gets attracted to unimportant things and all that. Is the process working, you know? But then as you get real close to that final test, right? then we see that these people that were just like sitting next to us like like a peer yesterday now they're like they're beginning to speak on a deep level like their character right out of bhagavatam and you know and yeah. so, so as you as you get closer to as the reality of it sets in all of that work that someone's done like all of that sadhana all of that hearing all that contemplation it seems to mature you know it's like the ingredient of like death you know being near you know, matures all of that contemplation to deeper realization. Suddenly, the the person that was like, you know, j just one of our peers is speaking like a guru. Yeah, it's powerful to give us hope. That's the beauty of loss. Hmm. You know, the beauty of loss. It, when when we're in knowledge, it gives us realization. When we're not in knowledge and there's loss, we just feel frustrated. We feel bitter. We feel angry at the world. And that's the that's the why we say that we don't say it, but we repeat what the great sages have said that. Uh, uh, yeah. What, what what do they what say? Do, what do they say? <laughs> what did they say again? <laughs> well, the, on a side note, they say that Krishna, when Krishna likes you, he gives you what you want. And when he loves you, he starts to take things away from you. That's and true. then you there's and then there's a, this this strong, strong dependence on Krishna and you start to realize what I what what am I what what have I been taking shelter of what by the way I, th I think it doesn't say exactly like when he likes you he does this and when he loves you he does that it's like he only likes all right listen I don't know maybe somebody made that up I had something no, 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 no. else in I was going to say in it says that when he becomes particular I, I think it's phrased like when he's particularly merciful to one he takes mm. everything away like that. well that's what I meant to say Okay. But the idea is that there is no more shelter. I cannot take shelter in anything when I get mm -hmm. to this moment of I'm leaving my body. I took shelter in my um, good looks. No one's looking good on there as they're dying, you know, or I'm going to take shelter in my strength or my intelligence or my credit card or my, you know, my loving mm -hmm. family or my, my home, you know, it's been my family home or the, the ego that zips all this stuff together that I'm, I'm strutting around with. Who cares? At that time of your existence, who cares? And now the Bhagavatam becomes essential mm -hmm. and there's no one left to take shelter of. And due to, due to some illusion that I still am this stuff, I still am this home, body, family, friends, career, etc. Then I'm taking shelter of those things and I'm using that as the lubricant to get by in this world with relationships and with my sense of self. It's not me. And slowly, every one of us is we're going to start to get pruned, just like you prune away a rose bush. And if and we do this right, that pruning process is not to kill the rose. It's to enhance the roses. It's to enhance the flower and the fragrance and the buds in the coming season. 
So everything that we're going through, these tough times, you're mentioning this yesterday, these tough times, these are the glorious times. When it's bad, it's good. And it's glory go. for devotees, right? When it's bad, it's glorious. Mm. When it's okay. good, it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Well, you know, because we were saying, what was it they were saying yesterday? Oh, we were getting knitted to the material world, right? The successful person feels like they're, how did, um, how did, how did our author quote that yesterday? Do you remember yesterday's nugget? Um, I'm forgetting. Knits a man to the world. Prosperity knits a man to the world. Mm -hmm. C.S. Lewis. That's what that's what we mean by when it's good, it's bad. You forget. Like Indra. Here's the verse: Yes, ya hum anu nami. And Krishna says. If I specially favor someone, I gradually take everything away. Mm. That's a special, special. I specially favor someone. Wow. Feeling some loss today, people? You're favored. You're, specially, you're, you're favored. <laughs> you're special. Especially favored. <laughs> feeling some, feeling abundance <laughs> from chanting those abundance mantras? You're not so special. You're not, no. It's not good. Not good. <laughs> not good at all. <laughs> Bad. All right. So we got it hard. Quick... It's all upside down, isn't it? Yeah. I just it's... need an attitude adjustment. Okay. More than I need an abundance mantra, I need an attitude adjustment. Mm, abundance mantra. Abundance. You ever get people asking, teach me an abundance mantra to Lakshmi? I've heard, <laughs> I've had people, they never say money. They say abundance, teach me abundance. <laughs> right. I need abundance. What they mean is life. money. What they just give, <laughs> <laughs> give me money, please. <laughs> Is there a money mantra you got, Kostuba, and all those mantras you study? No, I don't have one of those. Now, Mariji, do we have any announcements for today? Did we do that already? Am I uh, we out? haven't done it. We do have announcements. Okay. Okay. We have back to your recovery group meetings today. Um, Tuesday's the day where the men and women are separate. The men meet all at right. 11, and the women meet at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. Now, Roganath, we have a nugget for today. We're, we're continuing our C.S. Lewis is it C.S. Lewis? C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis uh, week here. Okay. With nuggets from the man himself. Here it is. Ready? Yeah. Uh, if these holy places, things, and days cease to remind us, if they obliterate our awareness that all ground, all ground is holy, and every bush, could we perceive it, a burning bush, then the halos begin to then the the, the the hallows or the halos the, the, the hallows begin to begin to harm like hallow hence, would be thy name right? hallow. hallow okay the hallows begin to harm hence both the necessity and the perennial danger of religion read that again well interesting read that again if the holy places things and days cease to remind us if they obliterate our awareness that all ground is holy and every bush could could we perceive it a burning bush then the hallows begin to, to do harm. Hence, both the necessity and the perennial danger of religion. Mm, quote so this is religion. Right? They put it in quotes there. Oh. Quote unquote religion. Got that look. Right. Okay. You, <laughs> you look deflated suddenly. You're like, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. No. <laughs> no, I, I cut your enthusiasm down. You did you? No, you didn't. Something? You didn't. Uh, okay. Um, anyway, I think this is a really insightful thing. Right? Tell me what you think about this when you read it. Well, it's it's just discussing a very prominent, um, I guess you could say, tendency of human beings, and you could say of religious people in general, right? That any religion or spiritual tradition is gonna it's gonna have. Well, here he mentions holy places, things, and days. Right, there are days in the calendar that become significant for whatever reason right there are holy places certain places that are seen as particularly significant there's certain things right it might be a painting it might be an icon of some sort whatever it might be we 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 um how, how do you put, i think hollow is actually a verb right we like we we hallow them we we invest in them a, a sense of sacredness well if you like to know what it actually means it's sort of like to make holy or set apart for holy use That's yes true. thank you <laughs> thank you did you get that out of the amarchita because if not i'm not sure if i'm going to accept it 
but um so, so yeah we we invest in a sense we invest sacred at least in terms of our own mind we accept as sacred right yeah um and there's a point to that and 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 i what i kind of what i like in this quote is he he's almost using like yoga yoga terminology here like he'll he'll say remind us if they cease to remind us like even look at the word remind right to remind to bring our mind back to something you are a wordsmith sir <laughs> playing with the words very right? good remind <laughs> like this dis ease <laughs> you're right. good remind it has to take our mind back somewhere and then he says if they obliterate our awareness right so like just the word awareness that's also kind of you know a word you know where my mind settles what where my mind focuses that's where my awareness lies and he, here he's saying that they cannot not only cease to remind us but they may actually even obliterate our awareness mm. of what of what we're meant to learn by focusing on you know in other words we take a particular place and we invest you know an idea of it being sacred in our mind or a particular day or a particular thing but the idea of that the goal of that is that by focusing in this one space we're able to expand it and begin to see the same thing everywhere that's mm. how yoga works that's that's how ritual is meant to work that's that's why we invest sacredness in these things and so um he, he's saying that not only could it cease to remind then it's dead if it ceases to remind us right right but but it could even obliterate our awareness of it it can even be counter productive you, you do you take things like sort of like uh what christmas has become to be something like this that i that could be a good one sure steer has become and, you, can, and, you can you can slide right through christmas and just leave the christ out of it you know you and sure call it can. xmas there you go buy a lot of toys your mother didn't a bunch like of that. lights huh we know your mother didn't like that <laughs> you know, my mother wouldn't allow saying xmas in the house see because she was focused on this perhaps right yeah yes she was she's like it's obliterating our awareness of what this day is all about yeah she didn't say it like that but yes <laughs> okay <laughs> but but i also think that you know often these observances tend to become um tend perfunctory to, perfunctory yes but i was thinking they, they they develop pride in one right they develop they become oh. a, a reason for development of pride like hey i honored the holy day what did you do you didn't fast or you didn't you know like or Oh, you know, I okay. went to the holy yeah, place. I could what, go what there are you too. Doing? You know, like I live in Vrindavan. Where are you? Like, you know, it's like you know, it's actually obliterating what you're you, you're meant to actually realize. You know, there there's a oneness. You know, because we're we're uh, our 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 lineage and our philosophy is uh, very much like dualistic in the sense that there's God and there's me, and we're, I'm always me, and God is always God, and we we never, you know, I never merge into God or anything. But there's a oneness too. You know, so it's a chincha beta beta tattva, which simultaneously one and different. Mm. So, by by focusing our awareness on one day or one place or one thing, we're meant to derive something deeper and connect with something deeper, so that we begin to see that everywhere. We we begin to see the oneness. We begin to see every living being as sacred. You know, in one sense, every place is sacred. You know. Yeah. So, so I like to. You know, the, I was gonna maybe read a little something from. Uh, from the 11th canto i've read this before i think on one of the questions and answers days but 11th canto is so good i mean it's gonna be a long time till we get just there. jump ahead let's just jump ahead <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a long time till we get there but so many incredible and you know the the third chapter of the 11th canto is like just loaded it's like almost everything is there it's like practically just that one chapter is like all you need to know about spiritual life. Well, why don't you give us a little teaser, well, a little tra a, a trailer? Where it ends. This is where a, a movie trailer is, of chapter eleven. This is where the chapter or, ends. Eleven, can't do eleven because it talks about the, the chapter goes into the whole nature of how we're bound in the material world and why and how it how it manifests, and then it, towards the end it begins to talk about how you can break free. Right? All right. We'll and so, so this is the sage Avir Hotra, and he's speaking to Maharaj Nimi. Right? Again, it's like a sage speaking to a king. And the king's Marshall. asking really good questions. There's four questions in this chapter, and there's four answers by four different sages. Okay. Right. But this is the end. And so he begins to describe one particular practice, which is called archana, which means? The worship of the deity. Yeah, the worship of a form, right? This particular form we're, we're going to accept as sacred, and we're going to focus our, our mind on. And so he begins to describe how the process takes place and then where it leads. Okay, 
Mm. So he begins by saying, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I'm going to kind of hit some of the points. In text 47, he, he, the, the sage Avir Hotra says, one who desires to quickly cut the knot of false ego, Ooh. which binds the spirit's soul, should Ooh. worship the Supreme Lord, Keshava, that's Krishna, by the regulations found in Vedic literatures, okay, so, such as the Tantra. So we're going to do this in an authorized way. It's a, it's, you know, it's a, it's a system laid out, laid out there. And then he mentions that you have to obtain the mercy of your guru who reveals to the, this, to the disciple the injunctions of the Vedic scriptures, right? So you should receive the blessings of your guru before, you know, to enter into this ritual and, uh, and, and instructions on how to do it. And, uh, and then he says, and then the devotee should worship Krishna or in the particular personal form of the Lord that the devotee finds most attractive, okay? So that your mind and your heart are naturally going to be invested. And then it says one should cleanse oneself, purify the body by pranayama, perform bhuta shuddhi, right? This kind of like focus that I'm not this body, I'm not all these roles that I'm playing, and other processes and marking the body with the sacred, sacred tea lock for protection. And then, you know, you sit down, you make ready all the offerings, you make ready the ground, you make ready your mind, and you make ready the deity. And then you place that deity in the proper place, both physically and within one's own mind and you concentrate your attention, okay? So it's all about where the mind's going. We're reminding here, right? We're bringing the mind back to this, and this is kind of ritual one would do on a daily basis. In and then, inspired, yeah. inspire, in spirit. Inspired. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm playing with these words now. In, in spirit, in spirit, inspired. <laughs> Thank you, Raga. So then, it, then it, are you, the, I know for the rest of the time I speak right now, you're just going to be trying to find another <laughs> word that you can do. That with. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> the whole show, maybe all day. <laughs> so, so then it begins to describe the actual. You know, you're collecting the different ingredients, the oils, the ornaments, the the you know everything that the scented water and, and all, all these different things, and they're being offered to the deity. Mm -hmm. And then the, these are the last two verses that kind of wrap it up. He goes, "The worship now once kind of done all of the the ritual, um, said prayers and meditations." And then in text 54, it says, the worshiper should become fully absorbed in meditating upon themselves as an eternal servant of the Lord and should thus perfectly worship the deity, remembering that the deity is also situated within their own heart. Mm. Okay, you see, see, I focused here on this external thing so I recognize the presence everywhere, like, including my own heart. It says, then they should take the remnants of the deity's paraphernalia, such as flower garlands, upon their head and respectfully put the deity back in its own place, thus concluding the worship. And then the final verse. Thus the worshiper, the worshiper of the Supreme Lord should recognize that the personality of God is all-pervading <clears throat> and should worship him through his presence in fire, the sun, water, and other elements. In the heart of the guest one receives in one's home and also in one's own heart. In this way, the worshiper will very soon achieve liberation. Mm -hmm. You see, so I think when when I read this, I can just totally connect it to what C.S. Lewis was saying, right? That certain things we 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 invest a, a sense of sacredness in them, but they can, but but there's a purpose to that, right? They're, 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 how did he say it? He said, "Where is it that that um, if these holy places, things, and days cease to remind us." If they obliterate our awareness that all ground is holy and every bush is a burning bush, right? Burning bush means that God was speaking through this one bush, and right in, in the Old Testament, I believe. Yeah. So the, you know, every God is in every bush, right? Um, all ground is holy. This is what this is where the the we focus on one thing, and then we begin to think this is the only thing that's important, and I'm the only one that's recognizing, and I'm important, therefore, and you're not. And it, then it obliterates our awareness of that. It's not mm -hmm. now; it's counterproductive. The dangers of religion. The dangers, but that's what he called it, right? The perennial danger of religion. Right. It's, it's always there. It's always, it, it's always, we're always prone to, uh, uh, what do they say? Like miss the forest because of the trees. Yes. Right. And sometimes we'll just do the opposite. Then we'll pendulum. Yeah, this is all too structured, all right. right? It is too structured. I need to just find my own thing. And then we, or we, re we reject it altogether. But then we find out we need community. And community helps lift us up. So it, it, that's a real that's a real pendulum for a lot of people. Right. 
You know, I would get into this, but it's, 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 it's looking too more structured. There's too many. There's a rule here. I don't like rules. There has to be a nice balance between um, moving forward in an inspired way where there's rituals with substance that I understand. Right. And then I can digest and then I can and then I can maybe even there's a tension, but I can work to live up to them. And at the same time, getting too much into rules and regulations um, and over missing the forest through the trees and, and then and then just rejecting everything. And then I have nothing and I have no community and I have no uh, I have maybe no parameters. And the car is just sort of driving all over the place. I see that a lot, too. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's easy. Like you're saying, the pendulum can swing in the form of someone saying, well, I see God everywhere. Right. OK, that's a nice sentiment. You know, but do you actually, <laughs> you know, yeah. no, the, the roadmap is important. You know, yeah. the roadmap is important. The accountability of people also on a path is I, I find in my own life very important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, the the, the yeah. regulations, the uh, the guardrails that 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 these the, the yoga paths put up are important for me, I find. And, and completely useful. I don't want to kick down all the guardrails and, and drive to the edge because I'm just a free person to do whatever I want. I want to, I want to, I, I want this to go somewhere like the sages who have walked before us. I just don't want it to be what feels good for me today. That's this feels spiritual for me today. Imagine um, this sage Agni Hotra just came right before you and started instructing like this, Ragna. I wonder what I listen. What would be like, that's oh, too much. That's too <laughs> no, much for me. Don't listen. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, your religion. <laughs> yeah. All right. Everyone ever wonder that? Well, like if, if if like a great sage Maharaj Yudhisthira just knocked on your door, what are you doing with your life? Well, I thought I was doing good. Well, you're not. <laughs> Corrected you. Would you do it? Would you do what he said? I think I'd like to think that I would. Yeah, I think I you suppose would. it depends what he asked me to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's get on with the Srimad Bhagavatam, my friend. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chayavanarotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojayam Madhiriyat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayesh Vabhadresu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki. By regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. I was born in the darkness of ignorance and my teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mara, hit it. Canto 4, chapter 19, text 3. Text 3. <clears throat> we only did two verses yesterday. Yeah, well, that second one was a good one, you know? Yeah. So, the Supreme. Well, what's happening, Ragnar? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I think I can remember what I did yesterday morning. There's a so, king. There's a pious king. Yeah, the, yeah so we're going to hear now that this pious king is doing these. 100 horse rejuvenation ceremonies in this chapter which is a way of uh just kind of c connecting himself and the entire kingdom with the devas with the gods and so on ultimately with god but um it, it was a way of demonstrating gratitude and, and and so on and uh but indra right the king of heaven the the, the, the in one sense this kind of top deva in the universe He's, he's recognized that I did 100 horse rejuvenation ceremonies. Now he's going to do 100. Envy set in, right? Fear, yeah. right? He, he may take my position. And so he's going to embarrass himself in, in this chapter. And he's going to come and right when he's about to do number 100, he's going to come and steal the horse. <laughs> it's such a childish prank. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it is so, an I love. Did you like my I love Lucy uh, Instagram? Did you something like this? Did, did you like my I Love Lucy Instagram uh, story yesterday? Yeah, that was that? cute. That was cute. <laughs> but it's like it's just like that, right? He's in these hijinks, right? Uh, uh, he's confused and worried. And I'm going to steal the horse. He's thinking he's going to get away with it. He's going to get caught. 
Then you're going to do it again, get caught again. So embarrassing. <laughs> like when Lucy got a job in the chocolate factory. Do you remember that one? <laughs> yeah. Or a lot of them like that. <laughs> that was the best episode ever. <laughs> okay. Let's read this. The Supreme Personality of Godhead's Lord Vishnu. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, is present in everyone's heart as the yeah. super soul. And he is the proprietor of all the planets and the enjoyer of the results of all sacrifices. He was personally present at the sacrifices made by King Pritu. Okay, so what's happening now in these next few verses is it's just like uh, an episode of I Love Lucy. It's setting the whole thing up, right? It's not only that he's going to embarrass himself, he's going to embarrass himself in front of everyone. Lord Vision's it's there. The and wacky like, hijinks. <laughs> yeah. The wacky hijinks of Lord Indra. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to hear about more and more of these, like, everybody that's important is there, and they're all going to see him. He's going to get embarrassed, not only, like, in general, He's gonna get embarrassed. He's gonna embarrass himself in front of all the the most important, you know, people. Lord Indra, if it makes you feel any better, been there, done that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Raghunath. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> when Lord Indra appeared in the sacrificial arena, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and all the chief predominating personalities of every planet, Shani, perhaps, <laughs> as well yeah. as their followers, came with him. When he appeared on the scene, the residents of Gandharva Loka, the great sages, and the residents of Apsara Loka all praised him. Oh. The Lord was accompanied by the residents of Siddha Loka and Vidyadhar Loka, all the descendants of Diti and the demons and the Yakshas. He was also accompanied by his chief associates, headed by Sunanda and Nanda. Great devotees who were always engaged in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as well as the great sage Kapila, uh, named Kapila, Narada, Dattatreya, and the masters of mystic powers, headed by Sanaka Kumar, all attended the great sacrifice with Lord Vishnu. Mm. My dear Badura, in that great sacrifice, the entire land came to be like the milk-producing Kamadenu, and thus, by the performance of Yagya, all daily necessities for life were supplied. Okay, so we're back to that theme that we we're talking about in the last chapter, right? That in other words, w the, there's a design within the universe that when the human beings are selfish and ignore all the gifts that they're begin being given, take them all for granted and so on, then the earth withholds, yeah. right? But, when, when, but then through ritual, through this Vedic ritual, one would, and again, we find that in different you know, whether it's a Native American rain dance or what, you yeah. know, in, in all different kind of, um, you know, societies or spiritual traditions, there's an idea that let's demonstrate our gratitude to nature and, and even specifically, right, to the to the persons behind nature. Um, of course, yeah. To quote the 1970s musical Godspell. Yes. All good things around us do, 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 come from heaven above. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for running something. I really want to thank you, Lord. Ah, uh, I should have been a Christian. It's not too late, Ragnar. <laughs> I think there's a I think there's a basement in a nearby church that's uh, needs you know what? you're singing over there. Okay, <laughs> we need a Krishna conscious musical now. There is one. There is one. What? What? There was that one. There was that one that the traveling road show used to do, right? That. Oh yeah. Right. You know what? The whole Mangalananda yeah, thing. That. I met him. He's gonna be in our show. Oh, oh gonna we're, get he's gonna be in our show. <laughs> Maybe you get okay. him for this Sunday. I can't get him this Sunday. He had a, a dentist thing. He can't talk for three weeks, but we're going to try yeah. to get him. Okay. Jeffrey Armstrong. Been listening to his classes all week. Really good. All right. Good word nerd stuff too. Great word nerd stuff. Oh. Who was that? Did we hear a word nerd thing you said yesterday? Education. Education. Edu. Education comes from comes from the Sanskrit word adhikari. Okay, it seems a bit of a stretch, but it's not. It's not because <laughs> if you hear the lat, if you hear the Latin, it's like. Edgy cha cha, something like it almost sounds like Adi Kari okay. from the Latin. Almost. It means to become qualified. To become qualified, to educate yourself. Okay. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Okay, so now we're hearing, we're going to hear a few verses about how the earth, through this, through everyone getting their head straight because the leaders got their head straight and saying, hey, we're being given all these gifts. Let's show some gratitude. The earth is reciprocating. We're, the previous chapter, we we're hearing about how the earth was holding back. Now the earth is just giving abund abundance. 
abundance mantras. Mm -hmm. The flowing river is supplied to all kinds of tastes, sweet, pungent, sour, etc. Mm -hmm. That's, Ayurvedic. That's the Ayurvedic six tastes, you know? Yeah. The sweet, the pungent. Do you know the six tastes? Mara, hot seat. I've already quizzed her on this recently, right? Oh, really? No. no? Okay. Sweet, pungent, sour, astringent, bitter. Salty. And salty. There you go. Good thing for, for a chef six. to know. Six. Six. So the flowing rivers are supplying all kinds of What's taste. astringent? Stringent is like when you eat, like, it's like uh, cranberry unripe. juice is astringent, stuff that makes what? your mouth kind of like, kind of suck in a little bit, like cranberry juice is astringent. Okay. Uh, like pomegranate. Pomegranate. Would they say if unripe you eat, pomegranate. Or no, unripe, um, whatchamacallum, uh, you know, those the, 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 those things that they, they grow down this. Mangosteens? No, 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 that fruit, they grow in America, like in Texas and so on, those orange Some ones potis. that are super... Persimmons? No, persimmons, thank you. Persimmons. An unripe persimmon is like the ultimate astringent. Like okay, mm. I got you. So we're supposed to eat that? Yeah. Okay. And very big trees supplied fruit and honey in abundance. Mm. The cows, having eaten sufficient gr green grass, supplied profuse quantities of milk, curd, clarified butter, and similar other necessities. King Pritu is presented with various gifts from the general populace and predominating deities of all the planets. That's pretty cool. The oceans and the seas were full of valuable jewels and pearls, and the hills were full of chemicals. I think, uh, I think a better and word fertilizers. Been, like uh, minerals. Minerals, chemicals and fertilizers. <laughs> Mons the, god, the goddess of Monsanto showed up and brought <laughs> chemical fertilizer. Four kinds of edibles were produced profusely. Okay, so now- Four types of edibles. Th there's also a message here, and I think we could read this commentary. But the idea is, this is the kind of stuff, if we're going to be materialistic, right? Like, yeah. this is the kind of stuff that we should be interested in producing, right? Not all these gadgets, not all these, you know, we mine the earth to get these minerals so that we can make computers and chips and telephones and, and things like that, you know? Yeah, we, 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 we drill into the earth to pull out petroleum, you know, to, to make fuel for the cars and to make all these plastic things and so on Th these verses are kind of showing that this is where human prosperity lies right mm -hmm. it, it, it lies in the gifts that are coming from the cow it lies in the gifts that are coming from the earth it lies in the gifts that are coming from the rivers and from the oceans and really all that we need is to, to live actually like very opulently you know to be materially very satisfied and happy are coming from these things. Somehow we got, you know, we, we got, we screwed up and we went off track, you know, we got confused, but, um, off the rails. This, this is what, yeah, this is what a really fortunate, prosperous society would look like is there's ample food and it's all delicious and full of nutrition and, you know, and, and you simply eat a little bit and, and you feel good, you know, Nourish. and you don't need to go crazy trying to like, develop the next thing and the next thing and next you know it's like you go to silicon you ever Valley, wonder you go to a supermarket like what do you need in the supermarket oh there's hardly anything there's thousands eat. of things to purchase all you need is some fruit you need some veggies you need and some grains that's been polluted with with pesticides and so, you know pesticides herbicides fungicides <laughs> yeah those fungicides concern me in particular right? yeah me too let's <laughs> let's read the message of the bhagavad here let's read the purport let's do it as stated in the Isha Upanishads, mm -hmm. it's one of the Upanishads, mm -hmm. this material creation is supplied with all the potencies for the production of all the necessities required by the living entities. That's the, the verse that we did a, a couple of weeks ago. Right? Om Purnam yeah. Adaha Purnamidam. Not only human beings, but animals, reptiles, aquatics, and trees. The oceans and the seas produce pearls, coral, and valuable jewels so that the fortunate law abiding people can utilize them. And you know, like we've said before in Ayurveda, those things aren't like pearl isn't necessarily just something to decorate yourself with. It's a medicine. You can make medicine out of pearls. Yeah, really potent medicines. I think when Prabhupada was dying, um, they gave him jewel, ground jewels, yeah. different ground jewels. Have you heard that? Okay, similarly. That's a whole science. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it is a science. <laughs> similarly, the hills are full of chemicals. Let's say minerals. Let's say minerals. Chemicals doesn't sound good. They're full of minerals so that when the river flows down from the, 
from them, the chemicals spread all over <laughs> the field. Good, right? like, doesn't sound good. The chemicals, the minerals. The minerals that, spread. Yeah. Spread all over the fields to fertilize the four kinds of foodstuffs. I mean, you know, that's why they this. say that the some yeah. people try to give that the Gunga. They say the Gunga, even material sciences, well, the Gunga is very healthy because there's so many rich mm -hmm. herbs that you can only find in the Himalayas that when mm -hmm. it rains and that becomes part of the water table mm -hmm. and it's filled with these minerals from all the herbs in the Himalayas. But just look um, at the perfect arrangement, right? It's, I always think about this whenever we go to Colombia because, you know, you, you can jump in the river there and you can just look at the mountains and you feel that pure water just coming down, right? And it's just yeah. like, what is the mountain? It's a big collection of minerals, right? That have that that, do, that nourish us in all the ways that we need to be nourished are right there in that big hunk of rock, right? Yeah. And the water, you know, the rain comes and it flows and it, it runs across that, all of that, you know, that that earth and that that stone and so on, and and the water just gathers all these minerals, and then the water just, you know, it goes down in that in that river or stream, and then it irrigates all the land, and the land becomes so um, fertile and so potent with all these minerals. And you just put a little seed in there and, and that plant begins to suck all that in. And then, and then by eating that plant, everything that you need is there. It's all perfectly arranged and we don't appreciate it. And we screw the whole thing up. Screw the whole thing up. Just like there's spring. I mean, if you live upstate, there's springs everywhere. And still people will, you know, park their car, pull over on the side of the road and fill up their water jugs yeah. with spring, spring water. Spring water. And then it's sort of like, but somebody got the idea to like condemn the spring. All these could be dangerous. People have been using them for hundreds of years. These same springs. And they're they're going to be dangerous. We're going to seal them off. We're going to sell you spring water. You know, <laughs> right. it's, it's 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 almost unbelievable that we live in a world where they're selling us water and we're buying it. We're like, OK, I'm going to buy. And it's never as good as a spring water. It'll never be as good as the spring water coming right from the earth. We're actually right. purchasing water. The How spring, crazy is that? The spring water, because it's going all the water is going down through the earth and it's just like it's going through a filter. It's getting purified. But it's also and, picking and up all the minerals getting, and flavors. And, and then when it's ripe, it gets pushed up. Mm. Next time you come up here, I'm going to take you to a really good spring. Okay. I got a spring in my backyard. I've been in it. Drink it from that spring. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I want to drink from that spring. Come on, man. It's do you drink people. from it? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I'm do drinking. you? I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not like every yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Well, the whole the whole property is on an artesian well, so it's like every day you're getting the water. But the springs are, are special because near you? they're not fracking near me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no, they're not. Okay, <laughs> let's continue with this commentary. So it gives the four types of foodstuffs. Oh yeah. So there's four types of in, in, in Vedic taxonomy. <laughs> they break everything down. What are the four types of foodstuffs? That which can be eaten drank licked and sucked so eating is food right chewed. drink is a drink it's all eaten but chewed a chewed yeah drank licked what would Swallowed, be licked? And licked a lollipop a lollipop oh uh, yeah sure why not what's the difference between licked and sucked i don't know i think that's the we could look at it yeah understand. yeah it's here it says chewed licked up wow. swallowed which you're going to swallow them all and drunk okay whatever yeah <laughs> Lick whatever <laughs> Reynolds was all he was all psyched for that and now just, then you guys both <laughs> chopped me down I'm sorry I didn't mean to chop you down Robert. Just all right these are technically known just as support what you're saying these are technically known as charvia True. those edibles which are chewed leia those which are licked up chusya those which are swallowed and paya those which are drunk okay let's just only in the that. Vedas they th do stuff like this we never talk about stuff like that break down food we got four basic food groups at least yeah. they did. <laughs> no, they changed that to three by the time we hit 12. <laughs> okay. Now they're rethinking that whole thing even again. Yeah. Preetam Raj was greeted by the residents of other planets and their presiding deities. They presented various gifts to the king and acknowledged him as the proper type of king by whose planning and activities everyone throughout the universe could be happy and prosperous. Okay. It is clearly indicated in this verse that the oceans and the seas are meant for producing jewels. But in Kali Yuga, the oceans are mainly being utilized for fishing. Mm. What's the what's the fishing movie I saw just recently? Sea Spiracy. Great movie. I, 
I didn't even know that stuff was going on until you watch Sea Spiracy, the movie. It's like conspiracy, but Sea Spiracy. I, got, I was able to put that together. That's a word. I know, but yeah, I'm just yeah. saying it for people who just Sea <laughs> okay. Spiracy, Sea Spiracy, like the sea. All right. If you haven't watched that movie, watch that. It, it, it It's good to know what we or people are consuming and, think, and the ugly truth behind it. I think the last time, was it Mara? Someone said it should be conspiracy. <laughs> it wasn't me. Uh, that is, said that. That's, that's, that's a better one. That's a better one, right? C spirit. Yeah. It should have been conspiracy. You know, there's a there's an ugly truth behind everything. I, I'm not getting down on people who eat fish. I'm getting down. There's an ugly truth behind everything that we've created in this modern culture. I'm looking around my house. I'm sure this microphone's got some dark history behind it. You know what I mean? We're a computer. It, it, for us to go and rally against all those people doing everything wrong, it just sets us up for our, I'm right and everybody else is wrong. I do like I do like sh the light shined on things because that does start to affect change. But these and but the change is happening. It's slowly breaking down. And I, where I think it will go back to is smaller communities doing things, growing their own food, living off the land. I don't think the way we're create we've created this world is sustainable. It's like eating your own body to, to get fed. It's not going to work in the, in the biggest picture. I think we're got, uh, about to hit this uh, breaking point. The prophet the Guru has spoken. <laughs> we will hit the breaking point. You're eating your own bodies. Join our commune. Join, Join our, our little commune. <laughs> I will be your farm. king. I will be your king. <laughs> Go I got the naked farm. Viking <laughs> as my bodyguard. <laughs> right. Do what he says. <laughs> <laughs> you got it all figured out. Because Stuba comes out in a chair. Hello. A palaquin. <laughs> He's a false prophet. <laughs> Kill Kastuba. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, there's a nice, at the end of this one, Prabhupada saying, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? He says, in this age, so many factories for the manufacture of fertilizers have been opened. But when the personality of God is pleased by the performance of yagna, the hills automatically produce fertilizing chemicals, which help produce edibles in the fields. Everything is dependent on the people's acceptance of the Vedic principles of sacrifice. Right? And when he says that, just understand that it's like, in other words, everything's dependent on our, on our realizing what we need to realize, on our developing a sense of gratitude, right? Mm. That, that's because that's what's meant by the principles of sacrifice. It's all there for us, Raghunath. You're leading the way on your little commune, communal farm there. My apocalypse. I, I, I talk about the apocalypse maybe once a day, at least <laughs> once a day. That worries me a bit. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to keep it real. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what worries Well, you know, because I, I love history and there's always collapse happening historically. There's yes. like one kingdom is taken over and this was Constantinople at one time. And now it is whatever, you know, Istanbul. Istanbul thank you. <laughs> so it's like there's always a collapse of the strongest cultures. And any time that like, will it be my generation where the rug will get pulled out from underneath me? Will it be my daughter's generation, her children's generation? When will the collapse happen? Yeah, and, you know, it happens when everybody starts fighting with each other. <laughs> you know, I know. It's and a, you can't that's get a scary part. <laughs> That's it, right. And that's how you know that a, a true leader, like someone that's like, that has some depth of realization or that has like a pure intention, they're actually trying to bring people together. I, I'm with you. And I think all the divisiveness that's going on in this world right now, it's opening a gateway for Lord Shaitanya to step right through it. The prophet has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that. I really think this is going to be the most spiritual enlightening time historically but sometimes things got to really crumble before um you know greener grass you know th things can sprout out of the uh rubble um so sometimes the it has to break break down first yeah so we shouldn't be afraid like we shouldn't freak out we should like as things get a little crazy right as the world's getting a little crazier you expect it to get even still crazier right but then it will hit bottom and then raghunath will arise as the prophet his commune and the teachings of it will spread throughout the world and there will be a golden age. <laughs> I will bring forth the golden age. <laughs> no, it, it is. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm really feel like, like people are going to like stop 
wavering to either side and they're going to get right in the middle and yeah. the middle is pure spiritual life yeah because both sides are getting crazier and crazier and both crazier. sides getting crazier they're getting more and more extreme social media uh, algorithms aren't helping but there is i do believe in the in, that people for the most part have good intentions I, i'm with you there you know on, on, on both sides of the spectrum it, it's just that we get caught up in all this periphery stuff and the way we think we're going to solve problems is oh. to demonize somebody else it's to just crush, not going to work to crush the other side yeah, it's to not crush the other, other side. side it's like it's trying to recognize what we all share in common and starting to work together but it's hard to get there right now and yeah, that's I, when I, civilizations collapse or i'm not done with you yeah <laughs> <laughs> Like we can't end on now he's depressed. Correct. What, what did we end on last yesterday? That was like a dark note too. Torture. Shiny? Torture. Oh, torture. Something about torture. <laughs> Something about torture. Civilizations collapsing. Have a great day, everybody. And then the golden age rises. And then Dragonoth <laughs> brings on the golden age. There is a golden age. We're in it. We're in it. And it's the golden age of Lord Chaitanya. And I will say, this is not a pearl of wisdom we're talking about today. This is the thread that ties all the per pearls of wisdom together from all the beautiful wisdom cultures of the world. I, I strongly, uh, I strongly believe in that. Okay. Thank you. I'm really speaking in like prophetic statements today. Yeah, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe well, I'm I a we'll see maybe I'm a prophet. <laughs> He's a false prophet. <laughs> Don't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are our takeaways, Mara? All right. <laughs> Mara's a little slow. <laughs> right, okay. Get out of her way. She needs the mic. Give her the mic. <laughs> back here. Law, uh, you can't take shelter of anything but Krishna when you're dying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's going to be a great T-shirt. You can't take shelter of anything but Krishna when you're dying. When you're dying. <laughs> yeah, I like your shirt, man. <laughs> we're all being pruned to enhance our growth. I thought we were talking about that like a couple of days ago. Prune. Yeah. And again, we're today. The okay, we tough times mention? are okay. glorious. How about that for a T-shirt? Tough times are glorious. Okay. The tough times, when Krishna is added to the tough times, we become glorious. It becomes glorious. <laughs> we're yet to find the perfect mug here, <laughs> but we're working on it. Remind, settle your mind and awareness on the divine. Inspired. <laughs> Where do you want to go with that? Convict. <laughs> Convict what? <laughs> it means he, he cons someone. And now, now he's a victim. It's he been a vindication. A victim, but he's the one who conned them. <laughs> all right. Focus on the deity to recognize God within and all around. Okay. All right. All right. Those I, I want a takeaway. Things. Somebody give me a takeaway. Beware the perennial danger of religion. How about just That's beware those... the perennial danger? That sounds very prophetic. Right. I think Raghunath, say perennial. that Raghunath like a prophet. Beware. Beware the perennial danger. <laughs> Okay. Exploiting the earth is like eating your own body. That was a weird one, Raghunath. <laughs> Why? That to eating makes your total own body? sense. I mean... Yeah, because you think, well, I got to feed myself. I'll just eat my arm. You can't do that. That's what we do. Right, right, That's okay. what we do when we put chemical fertilizers on everything. We destroy the soil. The soil which is actually nourishing all the, all the vegetables, all the rice, all You're the grains. Eating your own body. Eating your own body. Sir. I mean, don't, don't they say like that was the best takeaway yet. They say like you're shooting yourself in the foot or something like that. You know. Or... I like eating your own body. Okay. <laughs> True leaders bring people together. There you go. Thank there you, you go. That's a good one. Sometimes it all needs to break down for new growth. Please don't sing the song about sometimes you feel like a nut, really. Because <laughs> it's where sometimes was used there. You don't have to go there. Every time we say sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and Raghu the prophet. <laughs> there you go. That's a t-shirt. Oh, we did it again. We did it again. Another episode down. What episode was that? 732? 733. 733. Well, that's exciting. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. 
We got to do this. We got to do this. We got to give this up on time to everybody seven. to make the gateway, to make the threshold wider, larger, inclusive. A Follow house Raghunath. the whole world can live Through in. Ooh, that gateway. He's like, you're like Moses. <laughs> <laughs> there is a gateway. And naked Vikings walking you. through. Kylie Brown's walking through that gateway. Banjo Mike's bringing his banjo over his shoulder through that gateway. It's the gateway to God. And you are God. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're all together walking arm in arm like brothers and sisters. I guess That's where it always starts. Like sisters. That's where it always starts. But then eventually the cult leaders reveals himself Emerge. to God. Yeah, first it's all this talk about we're brothers and sisters, and then it's kind of like, yeah, we're brothers and sisters. I was a cult sisters, leader when I was 19 years old. I'm not interested <laughs> okay. in being a cult leader anymore. I've renounced sure? my cult. You don't miss it a little bit, rather than uh... No, now I'm just all into <laughs> apocalypse planning. I'm a prepper. <laughs> I'm a transcendental prepper. You don't When you prep, you just don't stockpile food and weapons and water. What do you do? What do you do? Prepping means... <laughs> Prepping means you're preparing your mind. I'm prepping my mind for God. Mm? Okay. I'm just worried about who's going to be God once we get there. Rather than <laughs> We're prepping what, what our prepping mind. Us for? <laughs> this is, that, that is the takeaway today. Real preppers prep their consciousness for Lord Krishna's feet. Oh, okay. You know what I do when I sit down sometimes and close my eyes? I try to imagine little details about Krishna. Even when I do my morning pranayama in the morning, I look at a picture of Krishna, I close my eyes, and I open my eyes, look at the picture, close my eyes. I try to really engrave that in the mind like I've engraved so many nonsense things in my mind. You know? Okay, here's a question, brother. When you think of the deity Radha Raman in Vrindavan, what little detail do you By the of? way, yesterday was Radha Raman's appearance day. That's right. Did you know that? I did. Okay. And now. We should have announced when you it. What little detail do you think of when you think of Radha Raman? Little details? Mm -hmm. Here's the detail of? about Radha Raman. <laughs> He's holding a flute. And they say that it, that it was a self-manifesting deity from a shila, from a stone from the Gandaki River in Nepal. Mm -hmm. 